I'm gonna do the participants. Hi everyone, we're starting the service now. Hope you can hear me. I'm going to grandma's house right now. So your name is Yeah. Um, yeah. She said I'm on my way at eleven o'clock. They didn't put her last name. Okay. Where's Boris Tomashev? He's here too. Yeah. Sorry? No, he is. He's up here. Yeah. By the way. I'll explain where we are. When I just want to say a few words. But By all here. means, Kurt. So people should understand where you are. We have a question I'm waiting on. What happened to, to Dina? To Dina? Dina's here. I saw her taking out her clarinet a moment ago. Thank you. Yeah, she's here. Okay. I think she's uh, getting her woodwind. Gotcha. Ready. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just um, ask mom to film the graves to the right and the left. <clears throat> so we're answering um, Barbara's question about who Arthur will be buried near and showing. Um, and Molly Pecan's grave is right over here. That's someone that uh, Arthur accompanied. Everybody, please let's gather. <laughs> May I give you guys one of these now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the right ear. No, I'm sorry. It's the left ear. I got left and right. Wrong. <laughs> the other. One of those the other. Ears. Are you sure? All right, everybody. I have to start the whole thing more. Yes, please. 
So I would, I would not be doing this if it had not been for Arthur requesting that I do it. Um, it's not a traditional Jewish thing to play it out of a funeral, but that's what he wanted. And two, one of the two songs that he wanted was probably one of the 10 most famous Yiddish songs ever written called Papa Rossum, which is cigarettes. I have seven copies. If you want to see the transliterated words, it's on two sides and it has a little translation. He himself was um, a seller of cigarettes oh. um, in Europe. The Jews suffered terribly before um, and after World War I, and we don't know that much about it because the Holocaust um, eclipsed it. Um, his, the composer's name Herman Yablokov, and it was really funny because I think the um, right, right here. yeah is named Yablokov. So I'm wondering if there's a no, no, he himself is here. He, you know, you should introduce us, not me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Let me just explain where yes. they are. Yes. yes. Thanks. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen. This is Corey, by the way. Corey Breyer. Okay, my name is Corey Breyer, and I'm the president of the Yiddish Theatrical Alliance, which over the years has become the burial society. We did other things when Yiddish actors were young and vibrant and going to different cities. Unfortunately, they would get stuck sometimes because the shows were closed. They had no money. They never make good money. They couldn't get back, so the alliance would send their money for the trains to come back to New York. Most of them came from New York. And this is what the Jews always, the first thing they did in an organization was form a uh, goodbye plot. Goodbye a plot. Because they understood just, that. Just want you to play it. Okay. I know. Yeah. 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 Especially people from the old canals and people came from Europe. Warsaw Brothers, or the Minsk, the, the Minsk Brothers, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the Romanian Eternal Lord Society. And this cemetery is full of these societies. Most of them are not active anymore. But our society here is called the Yiddish Theatrical Alliance. It was formed in 1970. 90, 90 something percent of the Yiddish stars in America and their spouses and some of the family and the lighting people, and the customers, and the electricians that were involved in Yiddish theater in the second half of years ago, which was so important to Arthur Abrams, Second Avenue and its history, they're buried here. Every year we come in September, before the uh, high holidays, and we perform a ceremony here. And instead of getting small, we're growing every year. And younger people are coming who are interested Maybe they didn't know them, but they sat in the theater and saw them perform. They studied them. They studied Yiddish in school, in college. They learned about the Yiddish theater. Some are performing in the Yiddish theater today, in the Hall Street in the Yiddish theater. So they're interested in the history. But like I said, almost 90 something percent are buried here. A few years ago, this wonderful man came over to me and said, Corey, I need a favor for you. He says, Is it possible that I can have the block here? And I said, Arthur, without question because I knew where his heart was. Sein Hans is the, his heart is here. It's a visionality of German, it's a visionality compositor between all the actors and the composers and the Schreiber, the writers, and the English press, and the English press people that are very here. So even though God has taken him, and we all mourn the loss of such a wonderful, dynamic person, at least we know that Arthur is where he wanted to be. Sufficient sign of Mishkun in between his family. Maybe not blood, it's a wonderful bench over here. But. <laughs> this is the family he loved. And I must just say one thing from the friend. Kurt Blackman, Brian Blackman. That's how I know all. Brian Blackman brought him to the Yiddish Artists and Friends Actors Organization and to the Yiddish Theatrical Alliance events. And it was. Arthur always sat at the Latner table. Herb lives now in Hawaii, and he is mourning the loss of his, I could say, brother, because they were so close. If you're there, I know that this would tell the last of his voice. But you know how happy Arthur would be to be where he is now. At least he's where he wanted to be. He said, he told me. Right next to him, Bernard Tarasik, my uncle, my mom's brother, and I hope they'll be friends in eternity. My uncle 
Liverpool's other half was a famous composer from Broadway, one of the few women composers of that time. Her name was Carolyn Lee, and she wrote the lyrics to Wildcat, the show that Lucille Ball played in. She wrote the lyrics to Peter Pan. She wrote the song, she wrote the lyrics to Fairy Tales May Come True, It May Happen to You wow. If You're Young yeah, and Hard. Nice. So, Uncle Bernie, you have memories oh. that I can't even describe of what he met and lived through with Carolyn, and he's the perfect friend to be next to Arthur Abrams. And they were together at many events. I don't know if they knew each other, but they worked physically together at many events. So, Arthur, rest in peace. And now your beautiful Lila Lila is going to play songs that you love. Bye bye. I'm Chazan Moshe Bear from Temple Gates of Prayer here in Flushing and uh, been associated a long time with um, the Yiddish and Artist in Time to Act as Club and it's a privilege to be here together with all of you. So there's a saying amongst the rabbis what emanates from the heart, what comes from the heart, is what penetrates the heart. And uh, who can speak to that better than family and friends? And so we'll begin, we'll begin, Greg, with you, please to share some memories and words of praise. to talk about what it was like to grow up in the Bronx, where your whole family was all around you for holidays and beyond. Um, you know, you never know who was going to be up from school or whose house you were going to be at. Um, you know, everyone was a part of everyone else's life. And also, what was a, <laughs> what was a part of life um, was music all the time. Music in the house, uh, playing on 78. So, Yiddish theater, orchestra pieces, um, he was infused with music. And, uh, you know, that's what he gave to everybody all the time. A anytime there's a piano around, he was going to play it and play something that would enliven people. Um, and he just loved to watch people responding to music. So, you know, he was the mood creator and, um, and just something he loved energy of, of people enjoying themselves together and um, you know in, in this last years in our relationship was a lot more than I could love just because it's different um, but it was lovely to hear the most 
<laughs> what he missed. Now we miss her. I just, uh, I feel less uh, A lot of people love Darker, and I've gotten to you know, know and be touched by their relationship um, and their help. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, as a source of comfort and consolation, we've always turned to Tehillim, we've always turned to the Psalms as a, as a source of strength and, and comfort. And so I'm going to ask my son Nathaniel, please, to, uh, to sing the 23rd Psalm, which is familiar to us all. Adonai Rovi no my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters, and restores my soul, guides me in straight paths for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. You've anointed my head with sweet oil. My cup runs over. Surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's where Arthur is, in the house of the Lord forever. He was born in this country, in the two places that we sometimes call the old country. The two places are Brooklyn and the Bronx. His father was a postal worker and his mother worked at Macy's, was a seamstress and had the heart of an artist. And early on, he had this interest and connection with music from the age of three. We'll talk about his life of music shortly. He had a, a sister, Barbara, that's your mom. And um, when she came into this world, part of his job was to remind her that he was the older brother. <laughs> and um, I mean, after, after all, he, he was the first grandchild. He was, he was supposed to be number one. But he learned over time to share, to share who he was and what he was, not just with her, but with everybody else. He mentioned that music was his life from that very early age. Three. Um, he became a music teacher in Bed-Stuy. Um, he himself went to uh, the High School of Music and Art and then on to Juilliard, uh, studying piano and of course followed the, the classical route of, uh, of study, not just, not just of course at that conservatory, but in Europe as well, in Germany and Austria. And uh, he was not only an accomplished pianist, but really a composer. And he found his niche and love specifically in the music of the theater. Of course, he loved Yiddish theater. Um, and my understanding is that much of the music that he composed has resonances of that music. Um, he composed for um, uh, a theater that's still around. It's called the Theater in the New City. And it's still around. If any of you are so moved to make a contribution, I know he would, uh, he would appreciate your support. And he would do things, uh, compose things that were entertaining, um, uh, maybe even frivolous, because people like that. But he also would compose works for them that were more existential. Uh, Barbara mentioned uh, a particular show called The Open Gate. Um, and this was important for him to speak of to those questions as well. Because it's not just the love of entertainment that moves us, but when we hear music that makes us makes us think, that's important too. It's music that um, that reminds us life is not just about fun and games. It's about 
how we have to behave. We have to be a mensch in this world. And so his music was there to remind us to do that as well. He played for, for Molly Pecan, who is who rests very close by, right over there, right? I think this gray. The golden age of Second Avenue, if you um uh, if you can find it online. And you hear, you'll hear him playing. The music of Yiddish theater resonated in his very DNA. I heard a really wonderful story that when he uh, went, when he had an accident in 1997, and he was significantly injured. There he was in the hospital with his lunch tray, and he's playing on the tray. He could still hear the music, and it still lived in him. When I grow up, I want that to be. I'd like that to be my legacy as well always to hear the music and to remember that this is what adds meaning in life. And those of us who have that river flowing through us are very, very blessed. I understand that he went to a, a master class and in his 80s and um, he was still learning. He was still learning how to play. We never outgrow that. If we're alive to the, if we're alive to the end, and so he was. And he was enthusiastic about, about what he had to share. The energy of music was his life, and it was an essential part of his life force. But it was not just the music, it was family, especially his wife, June. What an interesting pairing. What an interesting pairing. He, he found somebody who also was uh, of an artistic bent. And um, not your average run-of-the-mill girl. I mean, how many people do you know are part of the Barnum and Bailey Circus and who would have their husband ride along with them? And he loved to hike. And he loved the outdoors. There, uh, they, they, you know, they loved to be up in Mount Shasta, which is on the other coast. And um, please, God, if I get out there, Arthur, I'll go to the top if I can make it to the top, and I'll sing for you. They love motorcycle riding. And he was able to support and be, just to be supportive of her artistic career. But he also fostered her independence. They were in their own way obsessed with each other. It was a real love story, real love story. And yet they knew always how to pass it on to family. How many of you remember getting sung happy birthday to when it was your birthday? But yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. People want to be remembered and they want to be treasured. And they knew how to do that. even in the hospital. 
June, there was a younger relative on her side of the family playing piano for the first time. And he had such nachas from just hearing this little kid. How old was she? Just hearing her play a few notes. To find joy in the joy of others. That's the way to live. And all of us can pay that forward, I think. Thank you. Although he's not here to tell you, thank you for your devotion to him, Greg. That's, love is not just a feeling. Love is primarily, a, it's an act. Love is an act of responsibility. It's, uh, that's, that's why we're all here. What we're going to do shortly um, is we're going to lay a blanket of earth over his casket. And it is an act called, it's a chesed shel emet. It is an act of true kindness. He can't pay us back for it, right? It's a real kindness that we do. Put it tucking him in one more time. Um, let me show you how that's done. Thank you. First of all, we don't use we don't use shovel like we normally would. We use the back of the spade, at least for the first, the first shovel full, as a sign that we're reluctant to do this. We'd rather have him here with us, right? And secondly, when we're finished shoveling, however many spadefuls we use, we don't pass it on. This is not a job. This is an obligation. And I'm going to ask everybody here to participate. Hey, and we put the spade back, the shovel back in the earth, and the next person said, takes it up and says, my responsibility to you. Okay? Yeah, shovel afar, alma kamo. Arthur. You've come to this place. Rest in peace. I'll ask, I'll ask everybody to come. Yeah, you can. No, 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 no. And when we're done here. While you folks are shuffling um, and covering the casket, I'm going to chant the Tzidu Kadin.
עצור את המבולות, תיחוד רחב משפט, אוי, אמונה בעיניו, צדיק וישר הוא, עצור דמים בכל פועל, מי עמה לא מטיב על השליט במטה ומעל, ממית ומחיה, מוריד שאול ויעל. עצור תמים בכל מעשה, מיום הלא מטה עשה, עבר ויעשה, חסד חינם לנו תעשה, ובזכות הנקד כסה, ויקשיבה ועשה. דיין אמת, שופט צדק באמת, מערוך דיין האמת, שכל משפטיו צדק באמת, נפש כל חי בידיך, צדק מלאי מנך, רחם רחם על פני תצון ידיך, פתאום על המלאך הרף ידיך. גדול העצה ורב הליליה, אשר עיניך פקוחות על כל דרכי בני אדם, לתת לאשתי דרכיו וכפרי מעלליו. ואלה אגיד כי ישר אדוני צורי ולא עבלת בו. אדוני נתן ואדוני לקח, ישם אדוני מבורך, ואולך הוא יכפר אבון ולא ישחיר, וירבה להשיב אפו ולא יאיר כל חמתו. to chant the Elmale Rachamim, the memorial prayer. Exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Avramunya ben Heshyankiv, Emilium Gittel, 
to the soul of Arthur Abrams, who has gone to his eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. Let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life and let him rest in peace. Dear God, now you are his portion and let's everybody say amen. amen. Arthur and June um, had no children, but he certainly deserves a Kaddish because Kaddish is a prayer of praise to God. And we're all very, very grateful for his presence in our lives and his place in this world. And we're also grateful that he is surely, that he surely has a place in the world to come. If you want to join with me in the Kaddish, you are welcome to do so. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'alemadi v'rach irutei v'amlich malchutei v'chayi chon v'yom mei chon u'v'chayi v'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'izman karib v'imru amen yehei shemei rabba m'varach le'olam u'lomei omaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam Viet Nasei, Viet Hadar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shemedi Kudsha, Brichu, Le Ela Min Kol Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, La Miran Bialema, Bimru Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechayim Aleinu, Bial Kol Yisrael, Bimru Amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu yase shalom, aleinu vial kol Yisrael, bim ru amen. May the one who makes peace in the heavens make peace for us, for all Israel, indeed, for all humanity, just as Arthur is now at peace, and let's say amen. Before we go and transition into the Shiva period, and, sh and that will be observed. Uh, uh, individually by family members wherever they are. Uh, uh, Barbara is in, uh, is in Florida. Um, uh, she's really the only surviving immediate family. Um, uh, so again, Barbara, we wish you our condolences. But before we go, um, I'd like to say uh, with, with Dubba's um, Before you begin, um, the very first line says, Zognish Kainmol as the gates of Let's Beg. And somehow that seems to fit. It's never say, never say that this is the final road. The house. Und wo gefallen sie, sie spritzt von unser Blut. 
Typically, what we would form two lines uh, as people uh, transition, as the, the immediate family transitions into Shiva. But since Barbara's in Florida, we will. Wi okay, then in that case, let's form two parallel lines and we'll. Um, and you can pass through and we'll greet you with the traditional May the ever-present one and we as, as messengers of the ever-present one continue to comfort you among the other mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And we hope you know no such sorrow like this, no such sorrow like this ever again. And let's everybody say Amen. We can break apart the lines and go back to your to your cars as you wish. Thank you everybody for being present. Uh, Arthur passing on music, you know, generations, like I said before, it's like it's just so appropriate and beautiful, and your voice is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it with us. It's my pleasure. Yeah, really beautiful. Thank you for honoring me. I'll touch base with you. Um, you know, uh, later today or uh, during the course of the week. Just want to make sure everything is okay. If there's anything you ever need. Thank you. 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 This was wonderful. I'm so glad. Your name is what? Thank you. That's, that's... Oh, okay. So we're going to end the recording here.